Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Hi, everyone. This is Ringside Rain, and you're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. And now, here is your host, Mark, the Mark Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to another edition of the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. It's the Spotlight Edition, and I am your host, Mark, the Mark Martinez. Guys, again, we're going international right now, as we are going to have on somebody that's going to light up your life, because she's a firecracker. Yeah, I get the pun. I know. It's horrible. The firecracker Leah Sparks is going to be joining us here on the podcast this week to talk about her wrestling career and so much more. She is super busy. She has so much on her table. You have to wait into the podcast till you find out more about Leah. But holy cow, she's got a litany of things that she's doing and performing for us. In the ring, it is so cool. Guys, if you don't know who Leah Sparks is, get on all the socials, check her out, watch what she's doing in the ring, and man, does she just entertain. I'll I'll put that, entertain, and you can tell that she loves professional wrestling. She does. But again, it goes hand in hand with some other things that she does as well. And I'm going to leave it at that. So before I completely give it away, let's pay the bills here on Can Crushers. We'll pay them quickly this week because we, you 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 got to know what she's doing, the, the craziness of her life. So Collar and Elbow, hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool things that Al Snow and the hooligans have over at Collar and Elbow. Go and check them out. You know I wear a shirt all the time. You know I've had them for years. You know they withstand everything, even being a garbage man. Use our promo code can crushers it's all one word capital c and can capital c and crushers and you will save yourself 10 percent off your entire order do you want the new cody rhodes heavyweight champion shirt do you want anything that wwe has out there if you know you're gonna buy it check out our our show notes we have a wwe affiliate code and listen we're transparent as we always are and we always make sure you tell you this sometimes you do get a discount sometimes you won't but no matter what, you will help out Can Crushers, and we ha- we love you for that as you support the show. Don't forget, we have merch, too, over at CrowdMade. Go to CrowdMade.com, type in Can Crushers. You'll see our hoodies, our tees, and all the other cool stuff that we have there. Buy it up. Buy it up. Especially if you're listening. Listen, you guys know Toronto was our number one city last year. The most downloads of all, Toronto. We want to see you wearing Can Crusher stuff in Toronto or Montreal or anywhere in Canada. Buy it up over at CrowdMade. Another thing, guys, that you know I really love a lot is Dubby. Dubby is that energy drink. You make it in the morning with some water. Is a, is a garbage man waking up early in the morning, you know, two scoops in the shaker, shake it up, and there's no crash. There's no calories. There's This is my favorite one. It really is. Um, testimonial is there's no carbonation. You're just putting two scoops in that energy drink. Right now, I'm coming down to the the tail end of the Calo Cream. And I know you guys listen to the weekly show and then this show. I think I'm going to go back to Beach and Peach just because I really like Peach a lot more. Jenks has not swerved it enough for me to try the lemonade. So I'm just going to go back to my staple of Beach and Peach. But there's a ton of other flavors out there, guys. Give them a try. No calories, like I said, no carbonation, no crash. Everything's out there that you need. From 4 o'clock in the morning until 11, it's what keeps me going with two scoops and I'm ready to go. It is awesome and it's delicious. 
So use our promo code CANCRUSHERS to save 10% there. You're probably listening on your favorite device, whatever, right now, essentially. But we're available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, IMDb, YouTube now. Just the audio version of this is on YouTube. So like, subscribe, share, all that on YouTube. But don't forget about Podrama as well, where you can, it's seamless. If you're listening on your Android, iPhone, whatever, you can slap it right over to your computer, laptop, any other of your listening devices, and it just picks up where you pause and it continues to go. So check out Podurama. they got a lot of sales going on right now to, uh, yeah, join that craziness at Podurama. Don't forget to like Facebook and Instagram and X and all the social medias that we have out there. Join the conversations that we're posting about, chatting about, and, you know, whatnot. You, you, you want to be involved. All right, I've spoken enough. It is time to get the firecracker, Leah Sparks, on so you can hear her amazing journey into professional wrestling. It's the Cotton Candy Princess, Tiffany Avatar, and I am here to sweeten yet another podcast. That's right, Can Crushers. Welcome to Candyland. Welcome back, Can Crushers fans. You heard how excited I was to have my guest on, an earliest, uh, I can't say that word at all ever, an actor, pro wrestler. She was on Canada's Got Talent and with a standing ovation from Trish Stratus. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome within itself. She's made from pure sparkle the firecracker herself, Leah Sparks. Leah, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. That was such a fantastic intro. I really appreciate it. And yeah, aerialist, like so many people have a hard time saying it. So I'm just like, circus is easier. So yeah. Okay. Circus. We could have just said circus. Maybe I'll plug and play that later on. But. <laughs> so you're busy. Before we get into like your wrestling career, you're like uber busy, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I am. It's How good. Find the time. Yeah, I like to be busy. Like, um, I'll so circus is my is my main job, and and wrestling is kind of the thing I'm starting to branch into. Um, and then I have my acting work on the side. So yeah, a regular day for me is like training in the studio during the day, and then wrestling at night, and then my weekends either I have a circus performance or a wrestling show. That's great. How how much time do you put into the performing of the circus? A lot. Like um, right now I'm in the works of creating a new act and that's always very time consuming when you're in the running stage of a piece. It's it's a lot less time, but um, we usually like this week we're meeting five times a week for like three hours each session. And that's just our duo work. So that's not even our solo endeavors within our circus work as well. Crazy. Crazy, but you love it. I can see it because your eyes yeah. are like, I know you guys can't see it on the podcast, but your eyes are lighting up when you talk about it. How yeah. fun you are. I love it. I love the physical storytelling. And that's also why like wrestling has been a big uh, draw for me is because um, we get to use our bodies in the ring to kind of tell a story and it's same as circus. So how did you find the love? This is the wrestling podcast and we'll get to it, but how yeah. did you find the love for circus? I, is circus a, a bad word? Because I can try get to say aerialist, but <laughs> do you find it as like a because sometimes circus is crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um circus is good. Circus is a great word. It's a fun community. It's it's similar to wrestling too, in the sense of like there's a lot of dreamers and passionate people who are extremely hardworking and we're all doing things with our bodies that like we really shouldn't be capable of doing and yet there we are in the ring throwing these feats and there we are in the air or on the ground in our acrobatics during uh, circus shows um yeah I don't know I just I do love it a lot and and I'm starting to really um fall more and more in love with wrestling though so it has some competition in my life now all right, let's do the, the rewind to find out how you got in love. And it, we'll definitely talk about Trish. We'll, we'll give you that moment, too. But um, how did you find wrestling? Mom, dad, Uncle Joe, and Sal. Who said that, hey, watch wrestling because it's crazy? Right? Like, how does it get into people's lives? I think a lot of the time it is family. So for me, my grandparents, they just, they had it on all the time. And that went down to my dad, who then introduced wrestling to us and when I was really young, I started watching it. I remember like Monday nights, I had a 
later bedtime just so I can watch Raw. So that was always fun. And and then after, you know, growing up and becoming more of a teenager or going to theater school, wrestling kind of like came in and out of my life more. Um, but then I was making a big move to Montreal and I had just watched the movie Fighting with My Family. And uh, I was like, you know what, maybe maybe I, you know, move to this new province, new city and try to make some friends, do this thing that will help keep me active, keep me busy or and uh, then it kind of went crazy. <laughs> Do you remember, and this is hard because I can't, definitely much older than you, by the way, definitely much older than you, but I can't remember the very first match that my like my grandfather showed me, but do you remember era or do you remember your first match essentially? I, I know a lot of people who do, and I'm like, how do you remember the very first introduction to seeing wrestling? I don't have that, but I definitely did watch it kind of like Attitude Era. I feel like I'm older than I look, um, so I did watch it in the Attitude Era, but then I remember like a pivotal storyline for me was Rey Mysterio um, fighting for custody against Eddie Guerrero, and that was kind of like the storyline for me that I really uh, couldn't let go like when I was a kid it, it freaking traumatized me my parents had to sit me down and tell me that wrestling was scripted after that because I was I'm glad you didn't really use concerned. the F word yeah yeah <laughs> so clearly Ray was one of your favorites growing up then who are some of your others that you really kind of transitioned to yeah, Rey Mysterio was obviously the main one. Like, I don't even know if I owned an action figure other than him. My sister had all of them. I just had Rey Mysterio. Um, Rey Mysterio merch, all of that. I was kind of all in on him. But like women wrestlers that I looked up to, obviously Trish Stratus, um, as I kind of mentioned on Canada's, Canada's Got Talent when we had a segment and I got to talk about, you know, my inspiration for her and how she traversed, um, you know, a very male disciplined work environment and entertainment world and kind of created new opportunities for women within that. Um, so that was very inspiring. And then Mickey James, I always say too, because I just love her energy. I think she's a great like technical wrestler and um, yeah, she would always entertain me really well. So then nice, nice. <sighs> Let's talk about a little bit of you growing up, aside from like circus or, you know, not in-depth family or anything, but like, what else were you into? Were you like, I, I have a feeling dance because you just have this like big dance vibe around you. Yeah, actually dance. I was, I did dance, but only for a year. I started uh, dance when I was 16. And I remember because it was my first year, um, I was with, when you compete and it's your first year you're in a level where everyone is competing for their first year. So normally when you compete for your first year, you're very young. So a lot of the people in my class were like eight, nine, 10, and I was like 16. Ooh. Yeah. So it was like really funny. Um, but so I did dance, but only for a year. I really did gymnastics growing up um, and acting. Like acting was my passion. I saw a play. I saw Wicked and I seen a performer called Megan Hilty. And I just was blown away. I was like, I want to do that. I want to touch people's lives like that. I want to help people escape. And I didn't realize at the time what that would become for me. And it's, I've been able to do that in a lot of different ways via wrestling, circus, choreographing, dance. Like, even though I didn't really do dance growing up, it did become a part of my life when I was an adult. Like, I, I did pole dance um, and I did it on a competitive level. So I, went to competitions and won some national titles. And from there I would like coach and choreograph other people's routines. Um, so yeah, dance was definitely a thing, gymnastics, acting. Um, my main thing though was definitely acting when I was growing up. So when did that aha moment come? Because you did circus prior to wrestling, you kind of already said, when did that aha moment come to say, I'm getting into this crazy sport of wrestling? Yeah, as I mentioned, it literally came in and out of my life. So there were times where I would be like, first, when I was younger, I'd see it and I, I thought, that's something I want to do. But I never thought it was possible. Like, it was never attainable. I could see an actor in a movie and be like, oh, that's a career path, even though it's unlikely. But for some reason, wrestling was like, I would love to do that. But 
no, it will never happen. So I'll never do it. And then I had graduated theater school and I had a lot of time on my plate because I attended a program that was a three-year conservatory. So I was in school from Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. with like a one-hour lunch and a one-hour dinner. So it was very intensive for three years. And it was a classical program. So we were working on like a lot of dense material. And so when I graduated, I was like, I have all of this free time. What do I do? And that's when I found pole dance and began competing. But throughout my journey with that, I started getting interested in wrestling again. And I was looking up places to go. This was in Toronto, where I where I grew up. I'm in Montreal right now. Lightning strikes. It, it's yeah. A, welcome to technology, right? It's right. Just, it is. All right. So we were kind of talking about your love and that aha moment that you had that you found uh, professional wrestling. So go, you yes. pick up whatever you want to. I'll splice it together. Yeah, I was just saying. Um, eventually, you know, it came in and came in and out of my life and. When I graduated theater school, I was like, should I wrestle? And I was trying to look up places while I was in Toronto and I would find places, but I never knew how to access them. So eventually I gave up. I was just like, ah, I don't know how to do this. So years later, when I was moving to Montreal, I was like, I'm going to pick up a hobby, do something to shake me out of my routine. And I chose pro wrestling, which I'm always like, really? Yeah. Like, you know, but now it's not a hobby. It's definitely a passion. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I've said it multiple times, but it's running wild in my life. Like, I'll be like, those weekends are hard. They're long and they're hard, but they're a lot of fun. Again, guys, you can't see the smile and you are kicking ass and taking names on, mm -hmm. on the indie circuit. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't wait until we see you on the upper echelons and everything. That's why I grab indie stars because I love mm -hmm. getting the stories. We know the stories of Randy Orton, da, 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 Ray Mysterio. Yeah. We need these younger stories out, essentially. So everybody's like, "Oh my god, I, yes, I want to follow her because you're gonna, you're going to crush it. You really are." That's really sweet. Thank you. I hope I'm having fun with it. That's kind of my measure of things. Is like I really am in this for fun. That's not to say I'm not pursuing it seriously. I'm a very serious person, so I'm taking it very seriously. But I really am trying to have fun with it, and that's my like leading factor so as long as that keeps happening then i'm gonna keep you'll keep seeing me in the ring you see it in some of the clips that you put on instagram or other things that you do have again I, you're gonna smack me through the zoom call you do have the biggest smiles in ring like you can feel it on your instagram that you are just having a blast in Thank there you. all yeah. around yeah. so before we move on this is where I want, I'm going to pause you because I give you three names who I think in my head of wrestlers you are. So yep. who is Leah Sparks? I have Alexa Bliss. Because yeah, I get her a lot. Because of the cheerleading, the hair color, because she changes it off and on till you flow like Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, whatever you want to call her. You flow like her. And of course, I had to go Trish. I figured Trish was something to do in there. So I had to throw Trisha Bowen. Yeah. yeah. I like those three a lot. Like I, I can definitely see that. And I could see a nice blend and hybrid to make Miss Leah Sparks um, with all of those. And that's kind of, if, if I look at who those people are, like I do, I do connect and it does resonate with me, you know, like I, I want to do big things, especially for women's wrestling. I think, and I say this a lot, and promoters should know this, that if I'm trying to, you know, like as much as I want them to be interested in me, I'm also looking at promotions and seeing what their female talent looks like and how they're uplifting their female talent and how many matches in a show do they have where they're highlighting women wrestlers because I take that into consideration and I want to be a part of places that are invested and passionate about all wrestlers, right? Um, and inclusivity on on all fronts. But, you know, me as a woman, I, I'm looking for that. And, you know, Trish definitely, as we talked about, traversed that. And Mercedes, like, she's a boss. Like, literally, she is the CEO. Like, she kind of lives that gimmick. And I feel, you know, I own a business and stuff like that outside of, of wrestling and within my circus industry. And I've had to learn to advocate for myself and kind of set strong boundaries and be very... Um, 
purposeful with the way I approach things. And I, I, I do see and relate to Mercedes in those ways. And, and Alexa Bliss, she's fun. She's creative. She's playful. All of those adjectives that like, I try to like do while I'm in the ring. Like I want to play with my partner. I want to create with them. I want to share stories and work off of each other and not just have it be this one-sided thing. And I, I think Alexa Bliss is a very generous performer. So I love those names. Thank you. Yes. Nice. I got it hundred percent. Yeah. What is your, your thoughts? And I know this because, you know, again, watching you uh, on some of your clips and everything, I hate the word intergender. Mm -hmm. You're okay fighting men, fighting women, fighting anyone, right? Yeah. Do you think it should just be wrestling or do we have to have that stupid intergender in there? It is a good question. Like for me, it's neither here nor there. Like maybe someone would feel a bit stronger one way or the other and and they would have really great points. Um, I like the opportunity to wrestle all, all genders, all people, all sizes, Um, I think it can create really unique dynamics. And at the end of the day, like it still is an entertainment art form along with a sport. Like we are pro wrestling and and all that too. But I think it is fun to see what other dynamics and what other stories can be told when you have a variety of options there. So I'm kind of game for it all. And I also understand that there's a time and place for everything. So I'm I'm open to it when it works and when it doesn't. I'm also understanding to that. Storylines are huge for you, right? I feel yeah, like storylines. Story lines, yeah, even the bell to bell. Like, say I'm working a show where I don't have a storyline per se, but it's like making the most within that match is creating your own arc from bell to bell. You know. Yeah, there's a story within each match. You just you exactly. have to report. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you don't know. All right, this is some of my favorite talk. I want to know about your training in professional wrestling. Like, you have loved it when you saw Ray, and then, you know, you're doing it now. First day of training, you go in, you're like, I got this. How'd you walk out? Yeah, I walked in. So I am training currently at the IWS here in Montreal under Shane Hawk, and I'm absolutely loving it. But prior to my time at IWS, I started at a place called Torture Chamber, also in Montreal. And I spent about six months on and off there because I had a lot of circus contracts at that time. So I wasn't able to attend class as much as I'd hoped for. Um, I'm a lot more consistent with the wrestling training now. But yeah, my first class, I I was really excited uh, when I got finally a message back from somewhere to say, hey, yeah, we do exist. exist, We're real. You can come show up. Um, I went to a beginner class and... We did a lot of drills and we did a lot of like rolls and things that I took to naturally just because of the gymnastics background, but like chain wrestling was so unique and I, it was kind of uncomfortable for me because I was like, I don't get this at all, um, but it was really cool to learn and we didn't start bumping right away. So I definitely wasn't, uh, I didn't know what I was signing up for because I, I kept going and going and going. And then eventually we got to the the bigger bumps. I'm like, oh, that hurts. But I love it so much already that I'm staying. Um, but I remember specifically at the end of class, uh, Drew, the the instructor at the time, he asked me like, you know, if I like it and, and if I'd be back and in front of everyone, I was like, yeah, like, I love this. Like, I think this is going to be a really great hobby for me. You know, I'm, you know, and I really use the word hobby. And I remember his eyes were like, a little maybe disheartened a bit because I think he saw a lot of potential in me and who knows, maybe he still does. Um, And then we had a talk after class about like, you know, maybe where he saw me and and saw like where I could fit within this wrestling world. And and I I was really appreciative of that conversation. And maybe if he hadn't had that convo with me, I wouldn't have tried to pursue it on a more serious level. Um, And then, yeah, I started going to the intermediate classes and the advanced classes and then Later, I moved to train at the IWS just for change of scenery and, um, you know, switch up the vibe. I really like learning from different people and from different places. I, as a coach myself, I recommend my students to do the same thing. Um, So, yeah, I'm there now about three to four times a week, and it's really, really fun. It's great getting a different take on everybody that's, you know, not disrespecting you, head and shoulders above you. You know, they've been doing it for long enough, though. Let's get Bob Smith and John Smith and everybody's different idea of wrestling. Yeah, I think it's so important in in everything that we do. I love to learn. Like I have a 
really big passion for learning. I think, um, you know, I'm hard on myself. I make mistakes, but then when I've rode the wave of like coming down on myself, I go, well, that's an opportunity for me to learn. And if I'm still able to learn, then I haven't plateaued. And I think that's a really remote, remarkable thing that we can do is, is to learn and to keep growing. So yeah, definitely getting advice from other people or trainings from other coaches who, yeah, have been doing it a lot longer and they know their shit, you know? So right? I'm yeah. all ears. What's mom, dad, and the family say when you say, I'm doing this? <laughs> You didn't yeah, they were, that. I saw that look. Yeah. I mean, you'd think they'd be used to my antics at this point. And by that, I mean, like, you know, mom, dad, I want to be an actor, you know? Okay, sure. Um, and then I want to run away and join the circus. Right. Oh, okay, sure. And now it's like, oh, by the way, I started pro wrestling. Oh, by the way, I'm doing shows every weekend. Sometimes two to three a weekend. It's like, I don't know. They don't know what to do with me, but at the end of the day, they accept me and they love me and I'll, I'm just forever grateful for that. But I definitely keep them on their toes. I'm sure. Mom's helping you make, make merch. Don't lie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they got it. They, they're trying to come see a show now. So that's, that's exciting. And yeah, they're very supportive of it. And yeah, that's all that matters. Right. That's exactly. cool. All right, let's take a break from wrestling a little bit. Then we'll come back, talk about your first match. But let's learn a little bit more about Leah outside the ring, like nerd stuff. I mean, we're, we're going to throw your singing, your, your circus and all of that stuff. Uh, what do you like to do? You have a day off from everything. And I know you and far between. What do you like to do? It's so hard because I hate to be that person, but my life really is art. So even on a day off, I'm probably looking up something that will inspire me or I'm like doing a monologue in my house to my to myself, like just reciting Shakespeare. Like I really just love performing so much. And I, I yeah, so even on days off, it's it's hard to keep me like relaxed. So I guess if I really do have a true day off where I'm successful in not doing anything, then I really am not doing anything. I'm like probably watching trash TV, like bad reality TV. Um, and, and yeah, just trying to catch up on sleep because I don't sleep often. No video games or anything like that. I, I play video games, but it's, it's definitely goes through phases. Like right now I haven't picked it up in a while, but when I did pick it up, I was like playing horizon zero dawn. It was like a big game for me that I really loved. And, um, yeah, so I do enjoy video games, but I'm not all in unless I'm in like a phase of of playing. But yeah, like just just that. How much wrestling do you watch as a fan now or can you watch it as a fan anymore? Yeah, I watch it a lot more than I used to. So definitely being in it, I I watch it so much more. I still watch it as a fan, like watch WrestleMania. I was bawling when Cody won, like I am still looking at it through a technical lens sometimes and trying to learn from it and study it and study tapes in that sense. But then I'm also just watching it for entertainment as well, which I think is important too, because a lot of the times the people we're wrestling for, they're, they're watching it as entertainment and just something to help them escape. Um, I mean, of course you have the people who understand, you know, the wrestling and, and the lingo and all that too. So having a good brain for both is is great. So yeah, I watch it a lot, like every What's night. Your favorite thing going on right now? It was the Cody Rhodes storyline. I know it was a big one and it's probably way overplayed, but I just, I love it. I think he is a great storyteller and He's a very authentic performer within this heightened world of entertainment wrestling. Um, so it was really nice to see to see that. Would you have been mad? If we would have got six more months out of it to maybe like SummerSlam. If uh, one. Are you that invested? If they had their reasons, if they had their reasons, maybe if it was justified, then sure. Um, but also not everything needs a happy ending. So I would have been okay with it. And it's kind of like, that is life too. Like, we can really want these things in life and we might not get them. Um, but I am happy with the outcome. I think it's very well-deserved. And on like a, the thing that really touched me is like just the, 
the struggle, I guess. Um, obviously, it's a heightened, imagined world. But also, Cody went through a lot of phases within his wrestling career. And I'm sure there were times where it's like, I am just going to be this thing, this not We're super done. main eventer all the time. And then, and then to look and be like, you know, someone who's a bit older achieving what he's achieving for the first time. It's like, there's hope. It really does bring hope. So yeah, it was he's the new era of WWE, right? I believe it. I like it. I'm here for it. I love Cody Rhodes, but I'm, I am the one that would, I'm the shit stirrer. We yeah, <laughs> put it bluntly. That I wanted six more months. I think there was more meat on it that I was last week. I made the prediction that Roman was going to go to SummerSlam. Eh, yeah. Yeah, I did. That's okay. They could have. I'm sure they had it on the table and they were like weighing it back and forth. Cause you're right. They probably could have got six more months out of it. And then I don't know. But I on back the scene, but I'm, I'm not ashamed that. to say I cried Sunday night. I yeah, did. me too. Good. We shared tears. It's okay. All right. Silly questions time. All right. So let's start with a question from one of our past guests. This is the Cobra Katrina Cree from Montreal, Quebec. And my question is, you find out you're about to die tomorrow. So what is your last meal? Ooh, uh, Katrina. Why you got to do me like that? I love food so much. Huh. One, if I knew I was going to die, I don't even know if I could eat. I'd be so anxious. I'd be like, stressing out like I wish I could be like oh my last day let's enjoy I would be freaking stressed I'd be trying to do everything to avoid it but um I I love sushi so I'd probably just go to all you can eat and just eat and eat and eat and they'd have to roll me out of there so I guess sushi roll sushi yeah. roll all right what is your guilty pleasure ooh you said you like trash tv when you're not doing anything yeah so I was gonna say that was like Recently, it's been Vanderpump Rules, and I'm just like, and I actually watch it. Like, it's not just on in the background. I am invested. If I fall asleep during an episode, I will go back. So I guess that is my guilty pleasure is I, I do enjoy some trash TV sometimes. Um, it's a nice getaway, and it kind of just like empties my brain. So It's good to do that once in a while. It really we have, is. We have for, for mental. Yeah. yeah. We like food on the show as well. So this question always pops up. If you were a sandwich, what type of sandwich would you be and what would be the name of it? Okay. Hmm. What would a Leah Sparks sandwich be? I feel like, you know, the movie Elf, how it was eating like spaghetti with like candy and syrup. I feel like that would kind of be my sandwich is you would have like a regular sandwich, let's say. Turkey, cheese, lettuce, mayo. I love mayo. And then you'll like sprinkle in some like gummy worms that are sticking out. Um, maybe like, okay, pop rocks. So you get a little bit of like that yeah. firecracker when you when you eat it. Some cotton candy, just as like a nice layer. You love so, sugar. Yeah. So it'll be like maybe a sandwich you don't want to eat, but it would be an experience and Leo Sparks is an experience. The pop sure. rocks completely makes sense. It really yeah, is a firecracker. Absolutely. Exactly. So that's what I would say. I'd be a pretty ridiculous sandwich that you might not want to eat, but you got to try. Yeah, without a doubt. Last one. If you could be guaranteed one thing in life besides money, what would it be? Oh, I'm such an emotional person. So I'm like about to cry. Um, I was guaranteed one thing. I th- honestly, I don't know. I just would want to know that, like, I like really did inspire people, like, for real. Um, to really know that, like, not to give up and like you could do things. And if there was one guarantee, I would just, yeah, I'd want to like change people's lives if I can. <laughs> as sappy as that is, but it does matter to me. So, and that's being real. And that's, this is where I said, we're going to bring Trish back up. Yeah. I think you did yeah. one on Canada's got talent and with the standing ovation And have you had, have you had words like actually spoken with Trish? No, my only words with her were on stage. Those, those two times, which was really, really nice. I didn't get to see her backstage. I ran into some of the other judges 
Um, but yeah, it was, it was really cool to like, this was before I even found wrestling. So to have circus and wrestling kind of collide like that. And even when I go back and watch, there's a segment where me and my business partners and, and my friends, Laura and Glory were chatting and I'm talking just to them about Trish Stratus and wrestling and how it was involved in my life and how I, I love the like physical things that they do. And then years later, I didn't like past me did not know that future me would actually be inside the ring. So it does kind of trip me out to do that. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry. I made you emotional. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm, I, I'm a very emotional person. I, I feel extreme and I think it's a, it's a really good thing in some ways. And when I'm happy, I'm really happy. And yeah, like I, I, feel you know i feel a lot so and i'm not afraid to show it good all right first match vibes okay we're gonna get back into wrestling now first match vibes how were you behind the curtain and talk about the experience of that curtain because never in the ring me but as commentator as ring announcer or something every time there's there's times Leah, that I'm like, oh, man, I'm at this show. I'd rather be playing video games with my son or sometimes yeah. you in that headspace. Yeah. You hit that curtain and you're like, oh, you're a completely different person, right? Yeah. There is something magical with the, the curtains. Like, I don't know if they are a portal or what, but it's like you go through them, everything changes. I'm like the opposite is like, before my match, like right before I go out, I, I actually calm down because the audience and, and performing is actually what calms me down. So even if it's a huge audience, like I get less nervous because I'm like, it's just more people I can connect with. But it's the the preamble before it, like on the way and, and just thinking about the match and thinking about all the things that I can do and um, things that I want to, that I hope work in my favor when I'm wrestling and, and it works out for me. Um, that first one, I was in a rumble, which uh, talking to a lot of people yeah. in the scene, it's kind of like their first entrance. And I at first was like overwhelmed. Like there's going to be so many people in the ring. How am I going to be able to do this? And I was first. So I was like, okay, I'm first. I get an entrance. So that's fun. So I was really looking forward to the entrance. I found that would like calm me down. Um, and I went in and I think I like got out fifth. I, I tried my, my best. And I did some spots with some people that I know um, and I wrestled them and I fought them hard and I, and I got them out. And then, you know, I got to work with someone that I, I didn't even know until that day. And that was nerve wracking for me, but it was a lot of, it was a good time. Like we took care of each other and, and uh, yeah, he got me out and it was really cool and really fun. And I was like, I want to do this again. <laughs> so as nervous as I was, it's, it's very addictive. Was it a different feeling for your first singles match then? Yeah, first singles was different for sure. Um, I got to go up against actually a girl named Drea Mitchell, who is also new on the Montreal indie scene here. And she is fantastic. Like she is disciplined. She she is a powerhouse performer. Um, so if you ever get a chance to see her stuff or, or anyone, definitely check out Drea Mitchell. But it was against her and we had trained together back at Torture Chamber. So I, I felt very honored because I would always joke that I was hoping she'd be my first match. Um, and we went out there and, and we did our best, especially for two people who are very new. Like we fought as hard as we could. And um, I was nervous, but also knowing that I was going up against such a great athlete, such a great performer, such a great competitor and someone who I had already built trust with. Um I was less nervous and I grounded myself in those things. And then I was blessed to come out with the win. And I was, yeah, I was over the moon. Do you go back and watch, you know, as you continue to progress into what you're going to be and what you are now, do you go back and watch anything and, and kind of, I'm not saying it mean, but rip your pat match apart or like, oh, I really did that or, you know? Of course. So I do this with circus and I do this with wrestling. I think there's a way to do it. I will, I use the word acknowledge a lot. So I'm also, I, I mentioned I'm a coach and I, and I coach on the competitive level and also just on the creative level, um, whether you're someone going to like 
uh, big auditions or you're going just to like a fun showcase at your studio. And um, I do encourage watching the footage back, but I do want people to know like when you see something that maybe you think you can do better at, acknowledge it, become aware of it, and then try to be proactive about it. So instead of coming down on yourself and being like, oh my God, for example, if I'm watching my ring video and I'm like, I didn't strike as hard as I could have, right? Um, or wow, my feet, there's they're so I'm moving in the ring way too much. Like I should take less steps. Instead of coming down on myself about that and and beating myself up, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that that needs work. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to become aware of it. And then I'm going to try to be proactive and, and ask myself how, how do I I make it better. So instead of focusing on what's wrong, I'm going to focusing on how I can fix it. So take bigger steps, take more time, have better ring awareness, take in my space before I move those things. So how can I take less steps instead of just being like, oh my God, you're Freddie Flintstone up there in the ring. Or if I'm like, my strike is not landing hard enough. Um, I'm going to go, well, how can I make it harder? Pull back further, follow through more, maybe add more voice maybe add a little bit of my head, you know, like to follow through with it. And, and that's how I'll look at my footage. I will always look at it back. I know some people hate watching themselves, um, but I really do try to give myself constructive criticism, just as if I would hope a coach or someone who was giving me advice could do the same thing. They would point out things I need to fix, but how I can do that. So yeah, I'm definitely always watching. Yeah. It's easy to say, Hey, you're, your punches look like crap. Well, help exactly. me. Tell me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What's the best advice you've gotten either at training or behind the curtain, like show day or something from somebody? You know, the other day, I don't know if it was such, if it was like profound advice, but someone said something to me before I went out and it really um, resonated with me. They said, well, one, they said, uh, the audience is hungry. And I am a very gullible person and, and I take things for face value sometimes. And I was the second last match. So I was like, oh, they're hungry. They're going to be like not excited to watch because they're thinking about eating. Did no one bring food to the venue? Like they're not selling hot dogs. Every wrestling show sells hot dogs. But that's obviously not what they meant. They meant they were hungry for connection. They were hungry for us as performers to go out there, put on a show, connect with them, not just show them but share with them. So using that like active, that active word. So that advice for me was really pivotal. I was, I'm now taking it into every performance thinking like this audience is craving attention and I get to give that to them and I'm going to. And, and I did that and it was really, really special. I got to like look at all these little girls and even little boys and adults and their dads and their moms and whoever's. And, uh, it, it was really cool. And then after the show, they'll be like, you looked at me. And I'll be like, yeah, I remember. Because I actually did connect with them. I actually do remember, you know, the moment in which I saw them. Um, because I'm trying to form. Yeah, I'm trying to really go out there. So, yeah, the audience is hungry and they're craving attention, I think, is a really good piece of advice for us performers. That is that every match. You know, you're not supposed to steal the the main event or anything like that. But like you said, um, Leah, that it is really cool to be hungry every match, essentially. And exactly. If you get a using the if you like five stars or whatever, <laughs> if you get a five star at match number two and the main event only gets a three star, connect, connect. Yeah. That's, what, that's why we're there. We want to forget about reality, right? Yeah, and they want they want to build this personal connection to the performers and to feel like you know, they're along with us and they are. So it's always nice to kind of look out and connect with them and bring them along. Truly. This is the toughest question I ask on, on the show. What would you change about professional wrestling? There's some stigmas wrapped around wrestling and no disrespect. There's probably some around circus too. You know, yeah. you could maybe put this hand in hand. What would you like to change if you had your magic wand out there? Yeah, I would. And I'm going to be really honest with this one. Um, I think a lot of the times wrestling is a complex world because if you take something like um, a competitive sport, you're you're competing against other people. 
But then you take something like circus where you're just performing. So if I'm cast in a show, I'm not competing against my fellow stage people. I'm performing with them. But wrestling is this complex world where you have both of those dualities together. You're in this competitive environment that is also an entertainment art space. So for me, what I would love to see and what I would love to change, and hopefully I can cater to having that positive effect, is really understanding, and this is my belief, and some people will disagree with it, and that is okay. But I do believe that there is room for everyone at the the top. Obviously, maybe not at the same time. If we're looking at a champion, you can't have multiple champions at the same time. Like I get that, but I'm talking more in a grander sense. And if we can all do a better job of really helping each other out. And I see that. I'm not saying that doesn't exist in the wrestling world. I see it. And when I see it, I'm so appreciative of it. I take note of it. And I take note of those people. And I know they are my people. I just wish that there are some people who, within this community, are not as threatened of other people's successes. Yep. I really like to celebrate truly other people's successes as my own. I look at it like if they can do it, I can do it too. This is their time now. I can be upset that maybe I don't get something. I'm not saying I'm not human. I could be upset. I could be like, dang, that's something I really wanted. But I will never, and I mean this, I will never be upset that someone else got it instead. Ever. And I think that's what I would love to change is people, maybe they can still, you know, be sad that they're not where they think they should be, but we shouldn't be tearing down or speaking bad about the people who did get it in those moments. And I would love to see more of a positive change in that sense. And again, it does exist. I would just like to see more of it. Wrestling is a family. If you're in your end and if you have it in your blood, you have a sickness and you always, I, I was taught from my mom my grandma and everybody in my life. You take care of your family. Yeah. If that's the show tonight, that's the show your family is on, you know, mm-hmm. whoever you're wrestling, that is now your sister, your brother, whatever. And I love the way that you put that. I love that uh, you took the loss tonight, but you helped somebody else get over with the air quotes and everything. That is just as much as a win for you as them. I love that, Leah. Thank you. Yes, of course. Of course. And at the end of the day, I do think the wrestling world does it on a business level. Like I think business wise, for the most part, they go out there and they do put people over. I am more talking about the behind the scenes, the the personal, that that aspect. It's like still we should be putting each other over and uh, trying our best to be happy for each other. And we can still mourn our own losses, but we should not pit those against other people's successes. Great. Great. We've talked a lot of happy things, so let's throw yourself under the bus. What's your most embarrassing thing that you've done in professional wrestling so far? Oh, I'm sure there's been something. This hasn't happened yet, but I I wrestled with like a ponytail, and I'm just waiting for the day that it it flies off. And I know that that would be embarrassing if my like wig fell off in the middle of a match. Um, Oh, Uh, I don't know, because I want to like, there's some things that I'm like, kayfabe, you know? Right. No, I get it. But um, hey, don't throw yourself under the bus bad. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> There's just like silly things being a rookie that like I did in the ring and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, my God, I definitely did not know what to do in that moment. So you'll just see me like on autopilot. Like there's one match where I'm running back and forth on the ropes like multiple times because like I am lost. So I'm just running like I didn't know what to do. Um, So just moments like that where I'm a little that that rookie that rookie um is really showing the hungry story is probably up there too and the hung yeah it definitely was like what they're hungry they no one fed them <laughs> but that was more in my head i was like trying to keep it cool i was like just let them keep talking maybe they mean something else yeah. you, you're like are you gonna say anything like, no, I'm, I'm fine to keep, no, keep I'm just good. taking it all in they're hungry like someone get them some food yeah four people out there yeah what's your goals uh we kind of went over them a little bit what's your goals for the rest of this year is it come to america is it rip apart canada what's up i would love uh, my main goal and i say this and i said it before is literally to keep having fun as little as that is like that is my main goal i just want to keep having fun connect with people tell stories 
that's like what it comes down to. If I get the opportunities to do that on large and small scales, of course, that would excite me. So by the end of this year, if I dream big, I would love to wrestle in a stadium. I would love to branch out more internationally. I would love to, you know, get a lot of promotions under my belt within Canada that, you know, I've, I'm lucky that within my three months, I've been able to work two provinces, but I would love to get more provinces or cross the border or cross the seas and, and see where it can take me. But any opportunity where I can just go out there and perform, it's what excites me. That was a loaded question. And then you asked, you actually answered it overseas. You said, I think you fit in perfectly at stardom, your character, your yeah. everything. I think you would excel, you know, I would cry. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So yeah, Rome wasn't built in a day, but th those ladies, they're, they're intense. They're intensely amazing. Um, I, I definitely had to work a bit harder, I think, to to even match any, any of them. But yeah, that would be a dream for sure. That or wow, stateside. Wow is definitely on my radar. I will make that known to, to everyone. I am very, very passionate about women's wrestling and promotions like the two you just mentioned. I'm like, yes, I want to be involved in that. I, I want to help make a name. I like the women's style and I like the campiness and funness of wow. So I would, that would be a dream too. I already have a partner for you in WoW, by the way, and she's one of my best friends. In yeah? <laughs> Who is it? And Tilly. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Raylan, she goes. Yes. Her, yeah. yeah. I, I see, I think yeah. Raylan would rip it. Yeah. She pops up on my YouTube all the time, so yeah. that's really cool. You and Raylan, you and Raylan for sure. I'd be fine. I'm down, Well, Drop a line. I'd be I, down, Raylan. Like, hey, Raylan, make sure you listen this week. Da -da 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 -da. Get yeah, her she's in. very good. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, favorite question on the show, your dream match. Who? But I put a caveat on it. Where and what stipulation do you want in the match? Ooh. I have no idea. Okay, I'm going to think about this for a second. I mean, I would love to wrestle Rey Mysterio. If you're saying dream match, I would right. obviously love to wrestle Rey Mysterio. <laughs> That would be really cool. Um, stipulation? I don't know. I think I'm boring. I'm a little boring. I just want a regular match. I just want to just go out there and not really rely on anything else other than the, just the You're regular. Down. Yeah, I, exactly. I don't want any um, embellishments, you know? I just want to go out there and have like a simple, I like simple, a simple fun, effective match. The firecracker like simple. I know. Yeah. Right? Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> fair. fair. A little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm very extreme too. So I don't know. I'm a, I'm a walking, what do you call it? Like oxymoron. Like I don't make sense. It's a big word for can crushers, by the way. That's a yeah. Huge, there you go. Yeah. In where though? Would, would you like it in Montreal? Like it someplace or? I think I would like it in Toronto because Oh, and also this goes back to the other question. I would love to wrestle in Toronto um, because I have a lot of friends and family there and I, just being able to see them out in the audience would melt my heart. So probably Rey Mysterio, Toronto, regular, smegular match. Yeah, we got back around to it. We, we're there. Yeah. We're there. All right. So this is this is the sad part, but yeah. we have big news to come. We have big news to come. This is where I say, tell everybody your socials, your merch, your yada, 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 but go ahead and do all that. Yeah. So you can find me on social media. Uh, Instagram is kind of the space I really like to, to create on. So you can find me at Leah Sparks, L-E-A-H-S-P-A-R-K-S-S-S-S. -S 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 -S. It's four sparks. I mean, four S's, Leah Sparks. Um, and I don't have merch yet, but... I have a really cool concept. It's going to be really fun. And I cannot wait for you all to see it. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. But it's going to be really fun. So once I have that out, you'll see it on the gram. And where are you going to be maybe like the next month? Yeah, the next month I'm wrestling a lot in Montreal, Quebec. You might even see me in Ottawa. Stay tuned. And I have a big match coming up at the IWS against Katrina Creed for her championship title. 
imagine maybe that question was fixed huh? earlier yeah. right oh god it's like what are you gonna eat Boom. my I fist <laughs> did i forget anything do you want to bring anything up prior no. to no i love your questions i really enjoy talking to you you're you're so awesome and easy to chat to thank you thank you it was a pleasure having you on what's up guys it is my girl t Gaines here i don't know what you're doing at the moment but my advice to you is to pop open a can and slam some suds with the can crushers can crusher nation that was my interview with the firecracker leah sparks made from pure sparkle throw some sugar in there too because she is nothing but a sweetheart Listen, she's in the circus because I can't say that other word. I tried and tried again as I was doing this outro, but it just didn't happen. An actor, a professional wrestler on Canada's Got Talent, kind of ran into, not ran into, but, you know, had that cross with Trish Stratus. This was awesome. This was a great interview. I loved it from start to finish because uh, she's... She's a sweetheart. First and foremost, she's a sweetheart. And I love what she's doing for wrestling. On the independent circuit, on the, you know, when she gets there, if she wants to, she just loves having fun and just bringing joy to people. Truthful about every answer that we got on here. Wasn't trying to, you know, just kayfabe it up or, or, or anything like that. She She spoke from her heart. And, of course, you guys know we did this one over Zoom because she's she's in Canada. And I, I don't have that package on my phone. Let's just call a spade a spade. But essentially, when I was speaking with her, you know, you, you, she just was glowing when she's talking about professional wrestling and how she's connecting with the kids, the, the adults as well. But that story about really wanting to, you know, make wrestling – what it is for everybody and just being that's awesome lee is a hundred percent somebody that you guys should follow you know if you're listening right now and you're like man i i, I forgot to write down the socials she's tagged she's tagged in our stuff follow her be prepared for some merch and eight by tens and stuff that's coming out hopefully we can get her stateside and she can blow the MF and house up because she's a firecracker. Leah, once again, thank you very much for joining us. <sighs> I'm going to let you in. I'll tell you right now, that won't be the last time you hear Leah Sparks on Can Crushers. The, the Zoom, the door, the whatever is always open. And I can't wait to learn more as she continues to grow in this amazing business. So... All right, guys, that's it for this week here on the Can Crushers Wrestling Spotlight. Thanks for listening. Thanks for always being a fan. Do your due diligence and then uh, just be cool. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them because you never know. Yeah.